Robox fans here with Anthony Ard. Anthony, we're here in Telford. First of all, I want to talk about the frustrations of 2022. We've not got to see the mega fights that we're accustomed to see in the past, and obviously the one that springs to mind, or the two that spring to mind, Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury, Errol Spence Jr. versus Crawford. Just not happening, man. Well, there's a lot of frustration online, a lot of frustration. 2022 hasn't been a good year for boxing for, for that reason. What do you make of it? You're a fighter, you see the politics in boxing. Is it killing the sport? Um, I don't feel like it's, it's killing the sport. I feel like it's just on rotation. These things happen and it just, you know, it's like a, it's like a circle. It goes round. Um, I think it was a year ago or maybe within the last few years because of COVID, everyone's missed, had gap years. But at one point in time, every fight was getting made. Every fight under the sun. Canelo Triple G. Uh, like all, all these fights, massive fights were happening and everyone was like, oh my gosh, it's actually happening. And when it stops happening, everyone's like, ah, oh, it's ruining the sport. I don't think it's ruining the sport, it's just, boxing's still happening. You know, you've got all these, these YouTubers <laughs> coming in and bringing attention to the sport. That's another cliche because I feel like, I heard Javante Davis say it, I think it was Javante Davis, you can't just walk into the NBA and say, I've got a big profile, I'm going to be a professional basketball player. So I don't see why people are being able to do it with boxing. Getting professional licenses and just getting these big paydays and things like that. Yeah, it comes with publicity, but to walk into a sport and be like, yeah, I'm professional and I'm fighting at this level, you know, for, for fighters that have been putting in for years and built and grinded, it's one of them, it's one of them ones where, you know, we look at it and we're like, this boxing game's not a joke. You know, we've seen it time and time again. What do you make then? Obviously, this boxing game is not a joke. I've seen you guys train, you know, being hit with big shots and whatever else. But yeah, it's my point, he's a shape. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's a, he's a mad shape. He's looking at you actually in the eyes. Um, but what do you make of the inclusion of the YouTubers? I'm not. I'm talking about someone like Jake Paul, somebody who's taking it very seriously, calling out Tommy Fury. He's fought a couple of MMA fighters right now. Uh, but what do you make of the inclusion of someone like him and then someone like KSI, who's at the moment fighting YouTubers, fought one fighter. Um, who was at a certain level, but what do you make of that? Again, um, if you're fighting YouTubers and, and other people, then it should be put down as an exhibition. This is my opinion. Um, if you're fighting professional boxers, then they can go down as a professional fight. That's, it, don't, it don't sound confusing for me. Um, that's how I think it should be, because there's fighters doing exhibitions. Um, Floyd Maver now, he's earned the right to do all the exhibitions he wants, because no one was, he had a, 20 year career, professional career. But um, as he said, broken ribs, you know, spitting blood, um, cuts and bruises. He's been through all that, fighting at the biggest stages for how many years? So he's, he's okay to retire, just like Matt Tyson did, just like Ray Jones Jr. did. Um, Ricky had another day. They're entitled to do the exhibitions. But anyone before, you can't just do an exhibition and call it a professional fight. That's when I say that's the, it's a disrespect to the sport. Um, but you're entitled to do all that kind of stuff afterwards. Look, yes, it's my opponent. Look at him. He's in shapes. He's in shape. He's in shape. <laughs> but yeah, man. Um, yeah, I was going to talk to you about exhibition as well anyway. Uh, Hatton, Ricky Hatton, Mark Antonio Barrera yeah. for on Saturday night. You obviously got Floyd doing his thing against various crossover fights, YouTube, MMA, whatever else. In regards to that, that's fine because a lot of people have seen it in the past. Muhammad Ali did it, a lot of fighters have done it in the past. Um, but do you feel like the, the YouTubers who are doing these shows now, are they bringing more eyes to the sport? Is it only beneficial to the sport? This is what I'm trying to say. It's good for the sport because it's bringing attention to the sport. Um, KSI does numbers. I went out to that fight, I went to support it. Again, I know KSI. Um, you know, I've always wished him the best. He's done amazing in terms of music, um, YouTube. In the boxing and case has taken it seriously, he's in shape, he lost a lot of weight. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. And he's brother, Deji, you know, he got to fight Floyd Mayer. But this, this is, I'm so happy for them. I'm so happy for them. Deji was like a, a school kid smiling at his idol, saying, Oh my gosh, I'm about to step in the ring with you. That's amazing for him. Again, um, I'm a fan of Floyd, I would have loved to have an exhibition with Floyd. Everyone would, yeah. anyone that respects him, anyway. There's some people that go there, they're talking, being disrespectful, or whatever. But um, Floyd's a legend in the sport. People asked me this early in my career, not early, but they've asked me time and time, if you could have one um, fight, you know, um, what's it called, fairy tale fight? I said Muhammad Ali. 
because Muhammad Ali is known as the greatest for what he stood for inside the ring and outside the ring. Um, but again, that's a fairy tale, he's, he's passed on. Um, and then again, it'll go in order. Mike Tyson, Floyd, you know, Roy Jones, all these people are legends of the sport, people that we grew up watching. So um, someone like Deji, he was looking at you, saw him, like, he just smiled, he was just happy to be in there. Um, so yeah, it's, I think it's good for boxing, man. It brings a lot of attention to the sport. Okay, quickly, going to ask you about two fights. Yes. One WBC, I'm announced. Uh, Deontay Wilder fighting Andy Ruiz Jr. Yes. I know you like your American fights, and we, we have talked about it a lot in the past. Talk to me about that fight. How does that fight play out? Again, that's, uh, Ruiz is not a joke. Ruiz is a serious fighter. Ruiz is. I said it again. Um, when they made that fight against Joshua, I, I said, "Ah." Oh. I was one of the people because again I'm, um, I root for Joshua. He's from London. Um, similar come up. He started late. You know, he, look, at, look at what he's accomplished. When they made a fight against Ruiz, I said, "Ooh, this fight could be tricky." This, this, I hope they're not because he's not Baby Miller. <laughs> this guy was sparring Holyfield for years, and he's got quick hands and he dips under. And, and again, we all saw what happened. But Wilder. He's got that thing, but Wilder can look so <laughs> vulnerable from the first second until whenever it's over. The last fight he had against, El is it Elenus? Yes, it Didn't make no sense. The punch didn't, the punch look like it didn't even exist. <laughs> he was in a back foot and he done this, and the guy was out cold. Like, it's, it's, it's crazy. So he's got, like, literally, he's got a gift from God in terms of power. And, um, I just thought that's, that's, a, that's a good stylistic matchup. Um, another fight that is been talking, and both fighters have actually taken social media. Ryan Garcia, Javante St. Davis, Ryan Garcia showing his frustration that it's close, but we're not getting over the line. But if they were to enter the ring, what was in that fight? Ryan Garcia and Javante. Woo! Again, right now, I'll be honest with you, I don't. Tank, when he's on form, I, I don't really see anyone beating him in that weight class. Um, Devin Haney, in terms of boxing skill, that's the only fight. You know what, there's a lot of guys in that division. I can't lie, there's a lot of guys in that division. I feel like that's, that's a very exciting weight class. Um, it's a tough one, man. But um, Ryan Garcia, again, he, he poses all the threats. Um, he's come out on top every fight he's been in. Um, he's got quick hands. Do I feel like he can handle Tank? I don't think so. That's me being 100% honest. Actually, spoke about Devin Haney then, a fight that looks like it could get made because it's sort of with the same promoter. Nice. Devin Haney, Lomachenko. Great fight, man. We spoke about how good Lomachenko is. Obviously, people, after his loss, sort of, for whatever reason, started to talk about him in a crazy way. But that fight, if that fight happens, what happens, man? Again, I will go for my boy, man, Devin, Devin Haney. Um, I've seen that guy, I've seen him since he was a 14-year-old boy, a 15-year-old boy. And to see what he's accomplished and see him grow, I'm so happy for him and his dad. It's him and his dad because, again, that's a journey that I saw. And um, Tunde is not my dad, but it reminded me of like the journey. You know, they, 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 they argue, you know, the loyalty between them, they got the love between them. And um, they literally rose. You know, we went through. I remember watching Devin here. I went to his amateur fights when I was out there as well. We were staying in their house um, for a couple of days. Um, yeah, man, good people, man. Was that when you were in America? Sort of, yeah. with, were you with O'Hara at that point doing yeah. Floyd's gym and stuff like that? Yeah, so we went out to Vegas and um, Bill, yeah, was just like, man, pick up anything you want. I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah, like, yeah, man, we got anything we want, man. Again, it was, it was Bill Haney as well that took us to see 50 Cent. Um, yeah, man, he, proper good guy, man. He just, he just like, him and Tony got a good relationship as well. I'm just happy for the, he's got, his son is now the unified champion of the world. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing. And they had their own strategy. People were like, why are you going out to Mexico? Everyone had their opinion, but look, it paid off. If he fights Lomachenko, I see Devin Haney putting in a excellent boxing clinic. As your final one, uh, a very good friend of yourselves on Tunde is Dillian White returns back to the ring uh, next weekend against Jermaine Franklin. Now, if he wins that fight, a lot of talk has been said for early next year or the first quarter of next year against Anthony Joshua. Eddie Hearn spoke about it. Do you feel that like Dillian's in a better position this time around in the rematch against Joshua, providing he wins next week, than he was them a couple of years ago? Oh, definitely, because again, they're both grown in their career. They've both grown in their career. 
Um, didn't work's going to go into that fact of effort mentality as well. It's going to be like, yeah, I don't care. I'm going to go in there and just swing it out. I've, I've had my losses. I've lost against him. Is that, so now what? And like, let's, let's rock. That'll be very entertaining. Again, um, the build up of that last fight was excellent. Um, very entertaining. Um, yeah, man. Anthony Orbeez from these always a pleasure to talk to yourself. It's been a been a while, uh, but we finally got it done. Good luck on Saturday night, and uh, no doubt I'll speak to you very very soon. Thank you very much for talking to Pro Box fans, top man.